and welcome back into the Tiger Kickoff Show presented by the Columbia Missourian. I'm your host, Harrison Vapnik from KMU8 Sports, joined alongside the beat writers of the Mizzou football team, Wendell Shepard, Adam Ryerson, Brandon Haynes. It is our final show of the 2023 season in studio, but we got a nice, pretty New Year's Six Bowl logo behind us because the Tigers have officially clinched their spot there. How are we doing on our first December show? Doing good. Me and Wendell got to go uh, be with the team uh, for when they saw the announcement. A lot of excitement. Uh, a lot of, ang ang I wouldn't say anxiety, but a lot of nerves building up to it. And then the, the graphic just went up on screen. It was the first one. Yeah. First one, no build up, nothing. Um, and it took a little second for everyone to react to it. But once they realized they pulled the Buckeyes, they were pretty excited. Yeah, it's just super exciting time to like, be around this program. This is a really big matchup, big game. Um, first ever, you know, New Year's Six Bowl in the playoff era, so pretty, pretty exciting times. What was your reaction to seeing them show up in that New Year's Six spot? I, I was tuning in virtually and had, had the had the phone on. Um, was not expecting Mizzou to come first. Actually, I was just sitting there eat, eating some lunch uh, <laughs> with, with some family, and it popped up. Obviously, I think the the first thing is obviously excitement. You look at kind of the fans' reaction on on X Twitter, whatever you want to call it, but just everybody seemed pretty excited about the matchup. Obviously, there was. Rumors float out, would Mizzou get the group of five? Would Mizzou get uh, kind of slide in, in some sort of way? But a matchup against Ohio State is kind of what you would want as a Mizzou fan. It's a chance to prove yourself against a opponent that's towards the top of the, the college football landscape. Yeah, but you mentioned it's not a group of five team. It is the Ohio State Buckeyes, well, the second or third all-time winningest program in college football history. A team Missouri has beaten just once in the full history of this program. It's going to be a tall task for the Tigers in Arlington with taking on the 11-1 seventh-ranked Ohio State team. But, you know, I think if I just check my phone right now, I'll see another Ohio State player <laughs> either opt out or enter the portal. This might not be the Ohio State team that we've seen through 12 games this season. Their quarterback, Kyle McCord, has already left the program as of this morning, um, Julian Fleming, their number three receiver, has entered the portal. We assume, or can possibly assume, that other players will opt out. Wendell, I'll ask you this. If there are missing pieces from Ohio State, you know, we know Ohio State is full of five stars, full of four stars, full of elite transfers, but could Missouri possibly be at a roster advantage over the Buckeyes? I think they could. Maybe not from just, like, you know, a raw talent perspective but definitely you know just guys who have played this year who are still motivated to play I think like when you have an elite program like Ohio State miss out on the playoff there's always just like you know that disappointment you, you know we were trying to find or I was trying to like hunt down Ohio State beat writers and nobody was even talking about the fact that they were in the Cotton Bowl it was just like disappointment I think um, so I, I think you know we mentioned wide receiver three Julian Fleming being out you could have you know wide receivers one and two opt out today or and coming yeah. forward um, so I think I think Mizzou could have an advantage. The line's already gone down for this game with McCord entering the portal. So you're going to have a backup quarterback, backup receivers, a lot of guys who probably haven't played very much this year. And you think you bring up a great point. The beat writers for Ohio State, not really talking about the Cotton Bowl much. It feels like Ohio State feels like this bowl is like beneath them. Because the expectation at Ohio State, there's two things. It's to beat Michigan and make the playoff and win playoff games, which Ryan Day has done neither of those since his arrival uh, in 2019. But Ohio State sees themselves in the Cotton Bowl. And it's like, oh, yeah, we're not, we're not good enough for that. Because when they played in the Rose Bowl, Two years ago against Utah, the Rose Bowl was, I think, the most premium bowl game in all of college football. It's one with mm -hmm. the richest history. Their top two receivers, their starting left tackle, their starting nose tackle, all opted out. And this isn't the Rose Bowl. This is the Cotton Bowl. So we could see even more of that. Adam, we talked earlier. You have strong feelings about Kyle McCord mm -hmm. opting out of the, this program this morning. But not necessarily all the blame on Kyle. No. I, so I do think if you watch that Michigan-Ohio State game, Kyle McCord could have had a better game. But... Ryan Day handpicked Kyle McCord to be his quarterback. There was a quarterback battle at the beginning of the season. We talked about it earlier. They didn't address the uh, quarter, a needed for quarterback in the portal. And you lose to Michigan. Your one job as the head coach of Ohio State is to beat Michigan. And yesterday, after the announcement was made that they would be in the Cotton Bowl uh, in the press conference, Ryan Day did not commit to the quarterback that he hand-selected that won them 11 games in the regular season and came up one possession short to Michigan. That is immense levels of disrespect, in my opinion, and not standing with your guy is bizarre. And one thing that we have seen differently with Mizzou is the head coach standing with his guy in Brady Cook. If Drinkwitz did not show the same loyalty to Brady Cook that he did throughout the season, there's a chance Missouri's not 10-2. There's a chance Missouri's not playing in a New Year's Six Bowl. There's a chance that they aren't even second in the East. 
So I think that if you're going to pick this player to be your quarterback for the season and maybe even for the future, you need to stand by him through thick and thin. And one loss to Michigan, while it is program defining for the season, shouldn't be what changes your mind from your quarterback being with the program. So I think that Kyle McCord going to the transfer portal, completely justified. And I think Ryan Day is more in the wrong than Kyle McCord is. And this is a huge thing from Ohio State fans, especially if you see on Twitter earlier, the kings of Twitter, X Ohio State loves trash talking Ryan Day on there. Mm -hmm. Self accountability has been a huge thing for him. They, everyone loves to throw Ryan Day under the bus because Ryan Day loves throwing everybody else under yep. the bus. This is what kind of their side of things. And this is what happened when they hired Jim Knowles as the defensive coordinator. And then when Michigan had six plays of over 40 yards in the matchup last year, everyone wanted to blame Jim Knowles, including Ryan Day, where they couldn't even beat Michigan two straight years with C.J. Stroud, who's looking like one of the best quarterbacks yeah. in the league this year. That's just been a big thing from the Ryan Day, Ohio State side of things. And when it comes to a quarterback who maybe didn't play as well as someone like C.J. Stroud or Justin Fields before him, the, the blame will automatically go to the quarterback. And now we're going to see a new quarterback. Mm -hmm. um, Devin Brown is his name. He has only attempted, I think, less than 20 or 30 yep. passes mm -hmm. this season. He wears number 33, which is a cool number for yeah. a quarterback, kind of similar <laughs> to our, our backup, Sam Horn. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, we'll, when you come from Urban Myers as your coaching tree, you're going to pick up some negative traits. I'm sorry to say it, but, yeah. I mean, that's what has happened. That's yeah. what we've Brand, seen Brandon, Ryan. what are your thoughts right now kind of on the state of the Buckeyes going into this matchup? I've more kind of looked at the, the backup quarterback in general. So Devin Brown, obviously you mentioned only 22 pass attempts this Okay, season. I was close. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so he hasn't had much experience. He has two touchdowns, one interception. He saw time against Toledo and Rutgers. So obviously he's not in there a lot. He was in that battle, like we said, with, with Kyle McCord early in the, in the spring. And uh, he kind of he injured his, his hand uh, kind of in that battle and wasn't able to participate in the last four weeks of spring ball, wasn't able to participate in the spring game. So I think that could have kind of could have lent into it, but obviously Ryan Day chose his guy. I think in this kind of world of college football, this is something that's becoming normal because Ohio State can go out there and just scoop up the next guy. And obviously we saw guys like Will Rogers, Cam Ward, those types of guys already in their transfer portal. Those are guys Ohio State probably looks at um, and tries to just replace replacing and everything, but with Ryan Day specifically, I think that's just kind of the trend that's becoming in college football. And for a program like Ohio State where you know you can get those guys, it's going to happen. And they can't go get what Will Rogers or Dylan Gabriel from this game only. Their quarterback will have to be Devin Brown, who we'll get into the X and O's in our next show of this matchup. But I think Devin Brown is a much more efficient runner than Kyle McCord. On the Mizzou side of things, we'll go back to Ohio State at a later date. Drinkwitz and Schrader really pushed yesterday that they're not going to have any opt-outs for this game. The only player that really is in danger of missing it is Ennis Rakestraw, who's battling an injury. I wouldn't be surprised if he's able to give it a go um, in 25 days from now. What is the message? Is something to prove that everyone will give it a go for this crazy, you know, high-powered bowl game? Yeah, I mean, th that did not at all surprise me. Just the attitude of this team is, you know, even with each big win they've had, it's like, you know, people are still doubting us. We still... And more to prove to ourselves and to you know to America, people that are doubting us, like Ohio State fans, just like you know people not even acknowledging that you know th there's a game that's going to happen in 25 days. You know, Mizzou fans or Mizzou the Mizzou team wants to show me like, hey, you know we can you know we can beat Ohio State, we can hang with a team like this. Um, so yeah, I think this team's bought in, and you know guys don't care about you know potentially you know hurting their stock if they get injured. They want to go out and win for this team. Something to prove has been the motto all year, Adam. What can they prove with winning against Ohio State? Because even though it might be Ohio State's backup quarterback and their third and fourth string receivers and a couple other guys missing, can this still be a STP win and a landmark win for this program, even if it's against Ohio State's backups? Absolutely it can, and that's because they've proved so far this year that they can compete with the most elite in LSU and Georgia, but they have not beaten the most elite. If you can cap the season off with a win over Ohio State, then you have shown that you can top those top teams and you can continue to compete. And another thing it does, they're... I forget who I saw it on Twitter. It might have been Wendell, honestly, who said it. But if Mizzou beats Ohio State, they're probably a top 10 AP poll going into next year. Yeah, I was with thinking the top 15 before yep. that, but a good win against Ohio State, you're definitely right. Top 10 is definitely yeah. on the cards. And with a 12-team playoff, you are now in contention to make a playoff game the first year that it expands. So what that would do for the program moving forward and being one, putting yourself in the position to be one of those staple playoff teams has immense implications for the program and for every recruit, every transfer, every single future player to come to Mizzou. All of them will be watching this game and all of them will talk about this game if they're able to beat Ohio State. Brandon, let's talk a little basketball real fast. It feels like last January, February, March, 
the city of Columbia really rallied behind Dennis Gates and that Mizzou mm -hmm. men's basketball team. Games were being sold out. Plenty of fans traveled to Nashville for the SEC semifinals. Plenty of people traveled to Sacramento for the first and second round games. Feels like the same thing happened in football this year once they beat Kansas State and they got the home games against Tennessee and Florida. And then in just hours, eight, around 18,000 seats, we estimate, reserved by Missouri football at the Cotton Bowl, sold out. What can I say about the fans kind of rallying around this program and really believing in Drinkwitz and Brady Cook and everything that they've built in 2023? I think it just says a lot about the culture that Mizzou's built. And I think that actually started with Desiree Reed for in Swallows Higher. And I think that's something that we've seen in recent years just kind of from a, a student perspective especially, is how kind of the culture that she's developed with the coaches she's hired, obviously with Gates, she didn't hire Drinkwitz, but the ability to buy into him last season, obviously he was off to a rocky start, they added an extension there, believed in him, and I think that's where the culture started to buy in. I asked Drinkwitz kind of earlier this season kind of about what the expectations are like in the SEC, right? And one of the things he talked about was it was nice to have like the belief in him, and I think with Sam, I'll, I'll jump to Sam Pittman in Arkansas. The, obviously, they're showing a belief in him. I think there's circumstances like that where if you have the belief from your upper management, it gives you the faith that you can go out and execute. And I think that's what we're seeing with Eli Drinkwitz and this Missouri staff is they know that they're going to be in a safe spot going forward. It's now time of finding the right players and capitalizing on those. And I think they found exactly the right players, exactly the right tenacity and grit that they kind of need for a time like this. And it shows with the guys who have stuck with the team. And those types of guys are the ones cultivating that culture. And I think that's just been extremely impactful. And it kind of starts with the person at the top there that's kind of trickled down to where the players are now. And it feels like the culture has even reached its peak yet. I think mm -hmm. once they come back for this offseason, off this 10, possibly even 11 win season, and they get guys in the portal. I know what Cody's comments yesterday about the guys who believe are the ones here right now. There might be some guys who are at other good schools that were high recruits that might believe in Missouri football and will be happy to open up the door and welcome them in. We'll dive more into Missouri and Ohio State side of things later. But let's do some one last edition in studio of Tiger Trivia. You know, I was starting to dive into the Ohio State and Missouri archives, and it's very favorable towards the Ohio State side of things. So let's cross that out. Let's do some Buckeye trivia. There we go. We got the, the logo up there. Our director Travis, the absolute best. Some history with Ohio State's program. So many great NFL players, legends in that program. How much do you know about the Ohio State Buckeyes? We'll start with which of these three quarterbacks in their program has the most passing yards in Ohio State history? C.J. Stroud, J.T. Barrett, or the Heisman winner, Troy Smith? I'm going to say C.J. Stroud. I'm going to J.T. Barrett. I was going to C.J. Stroud as well. Adam Ryerson, J.T. Barrett, most passing yards in Ohio State history. Number two. Who has the most rushing yards in Ohio State history? Is it Archie Griffin, the two-time Heisman winner, J.K. Dobbins, or national champion MVP Ezekiel Elliott? You said rushing yards? Yeah. Okay. Dobbins. Dobbins? I'm going to go Zeke. I don't know. I think that was Griffin. Archie Griffin, the two-time Heisman winner, obviously has yeah. the most rushing yards <laughs> in program history. Yeah, what about the most receiving yards in a season in Ohio State history? Is it right now possible Heisman finalist Marvin Harrison Jr.? Is it Jackson Smith and Jigba, or is it Garrett Wilson? Most yards in a single season. In a single season? I'm going to say JSN. It's JSN season. JSN. How do you guys know? Yeah. <laughs> How do you guys know how to make JSN one of the answers? Of course, it is Jackson, Sith, and Jigba, uh, 1,691 yards in 2021. That's nuts. Most sacks in Ohio State program history. Is it Joey Bosa, Chase Young, or Mike Vrabel, the coach of the Titans? Most sacks in all time, not just in a season. Uh, okay. I'm going to go Chase Young. I'll go Vrabel. Chase Young. Mike Vrabel, Adam Ryerson, right there in the middle. <laughs> What about which Ohio State coach has the highest win percentage in program history? Is it Woody Hayes, Urban Meyer, or Ryan Day? Not most wins, highest win percentage. Is it minimum of certain games? Good question. No. I'm going to say Ryan, <laughs> Ryan Day. Woody Hayes. Ryan Day. Ryan Day has 89%. Urban Meyer has 90.2%. <sighs> I so just, just a year, Woody Hayes and like game, Woody Hayes has game. by far the most. Yeah, <laughs> Woody Hayes has by far the most wins, okay. um, but a lower win percentage. Last one, closest number of wins. How many days has it been since Ohio State beat Michigan? Because it's Ohio State has struggled against the Block M teams. So Missouri <laughs> has. How many how days has it been days? since they beat Michigan? Do we have options, or is it going to be closest no. to closest, closest wins? To. Okay. I'm trying to do some mental math here. 1,205. 
I was going to go 1196. Your closest, 1,465, wow. when they beat wow. the Michigan Wolverines in November of 2019. A very wow. rich program. You know, Heisman winners, national champions, all Americans. 2020. Yeah. Top draft picks. Yeah, they COVID opted yeah. that game out yeah. in 2020. That's, that, that's yeah. the one I was thinking of, too. Damn. Plenty of rich history, but it, it'd be. Maybe one of the biggest wins in program history for Missouri. Um, I think we can finally declare that this is Mizzou's yeah, Super Bowl yes. this year. <laughs> <laughs> Super Bowl. Arkansas, Kansas State, LSU, um, Georgia, Georgia. all of those games were yeah. Missouri Super Bowl. I think this might be this, this is Cotton Bowl right here. It might be yeah. the real one. Um, this might be a record for most Super Bowls in one season. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. If and the place and they've been doing yeah. one of them so far. Home of Super Bowl uh, 45 in Brain the AT&T numbers. Stadium. There you go. Uh, it'll be a fun one. We'll. Hopefully, I'll be down there in Dallas. And Absolutely. It'll be a fun trip. This was our final show in studio. Much appreciations again to our director, Travis, our cinematographic video. I've just said that word entirely wrong. <laughs> our videographer, JJ, um, is back here behind the camera. Um, everyone else has helped out, Nate Brown. Um, 25 episodes in here. It's been nothing but a joy. And, yeah. you know, one, one, one or two more, either in the field or on Zoom. But... Well, it's been a good run, boys. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, it's yes, been good to be here. Great experience. Can't wait to uh, see where it goes next year with yeah. the yeah. new cast. It's they're gonna be. Fun. They're going to do a good job. I, I promise that. But, yeah, that was our show for today. We'll be back to preview Ohio State and Missouri at a different location at a different date. Stay tuned for that. I'm Harrison Vapnik. This was the Tiger Kickoff Show. We'll see you next time.